March has easily been my best month for reading so far in 2024. I read so many books that I loved this past month. This video is a compilation of clips of me setting up this journal all throughout the second half of the month of March, and also getting ready for my April reading as well with some dedicated spreads to track my reading throughout next month. Hi, I'm Erin, thank you so much for joining me for this little look at everything that I read in March and what I'm thinking of reading in April. And I think jumping into my overall reading tracker for the whole year is a pretty good place to start. I always record these reading journal wrap-up videos in a couple of different installments over the course of the month, so at the moment when we're jumping in here, we're about halfway through the month. It was the 14th of March and I hadn't updated any of my reading journal things yet, so I had some work to do. I have the luxury of being self-employed and working from home, so I can quite often listen to audiobooks while I'm working or take a break in the middle of the day if I'm getting frustrated with my work, and I can go and read a book instead. This YouTube channel has also become a large part of my work in the past couple of years, so going to read a book is kind of part of my job now, which is super amazing. I couldn't recommend it enough. I like to number all of the books as I list them out on my tracker so that I can also jump over to the goal page and make sure that I'm coloring in the goal to match. And my series tracker needs a little bit of attention this time too. I read the novella that goes in between the first and second books in the Crowns of Nyaxia series, so I'm going to color that one in. I also read the second book in the Murderbot Diaries series, so that one gets colored in as well. And I'm working at the moment, at this point of the month, on two of the others as well. And the intention of this page is to write down every time somebody recommends me a book to pop it on this page, or if I see something on Instagram or TikTok that sounds good to write it down. I don't always remember, but I did remember to do this one. My monthly progress tracker pages are so much fun. I just love the way they look when they're finished. And it's always interesting to look back and see how long you took to read a book. Sometimes I take a really long time and sometimes I stay up late and devour things much more quickly. So it all depends on the book. Let's get this calendar up to date. And just keeping in mind that I was filming this on the 14th, any books that you see stopping on the 14th at this point, I was kind of in the middle of reading. So I didn't actually finish them then. It was just the point that I was up to. time I was recording my March monthly tracker pages, we hadn't yet chosen the book club book for my literary ladies book club, but we know what it is now so I can go ahead and print a nice big book cover for it to sit on the page here. It is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It's a long one and it has its own page set up but I am still reading it at the time that I am making this voiceover which is the 26th of March. I didn't actually start it until yesterday, the 25th of March, so it won't have a review page in this video, but that's where its review page is going to go. I've also gone ahead and printed some small book covers for the other books that I've completed that we've just added to those trackers, so I'm just determining which one's going to go on which page based on the order that I read them in. I can't always make my journal chronological. I try to make it as chronological as I can in terms of the order that I finish books, but it just doesn't always work out. I've come to a point where I can accept that, so I'm just adding the name of the wind to my literary ladies overall annual tracker here as well, and then we're going to move forward here and just keep planning out where things are going to go in which spaces. I have a few loose book covers floating around for books that I was reading at the time that I was doing this, so I thought I would just stick those to a page so that I don't lose them. And the first book I'm making a review spread for for this video is The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. If you caught my last reading journal update video, you may recall I started this one on audiobook and I was not having a good time with it at all. I did not enjoy the narrators. And so I kind of put it on the back burner and thought I'll try this one on ebook instead. And I am so glad I did. I think the audiobook colored my thoughts for a minute there, but once I got past that and started getting into the book. This was one of those stay up late reading, can't put it down kind of books for me. And I can't even tell you why. There's nothing especially different or special about it. It just, it just got me. It follows two co-workers who hate each other because of a misunderstanding from the previous Christmas. They are trying to save the hotel that they work in, which everybody loves, but it is not managed very well by their well-meaning but incompetent bosses. Izzy and Lucas usually avoid each other, but they are forced to work together to try to save the business and keep working for the hotel that they love. If you want to talk tropes, it's got rivals to lovers, it's got forced proximity, it has a one-bed trope in there as well, and it's set at Christmas time, which means it's a super cozy read. I 
I will never give you spoilers in the voiceover, but there might be spoilers in the review that I write on my page. So if you don't want spoilers for books, don't read what I write on the page, just fair warning. I tried to use these cursive silicon stamps that I got recently and hadn't had a chance to use, and it didn't go so well. I thought I would use the ink pad that also hasn't gone so well for me in the past because I thought I'll be putting it on top of this washi paper, which means it might protect the page underneath and not affect the other side of the page. But then it didn't really dry very well on the washi paper and it got kind of smudgy and a bit weird looking. So I tried to outline it in orange and that only sort of helped, but we're just going to go with it. Not every spread has to be perfect. It's okay. Even though I loved the book, it is a slightly dodgy review spread. That's just the way it has to be. I'm also decorating with some stickers from the Sticky Club Marvels of the Manor pack. Cozy historical hotel at Christmas time, like this was just perfect. It lined up so well. I will attempt to link to as much of what I'm using as I can in the description, but sometimes there will be some things that I can't link to just because I don't have enough characters in the description. So if there's something you want that I haven't linked to, just let me know and I'll try to let you know where I got it. I print all of my book covers for my reading journal with my HP Sprocket mini printer. I just use their collage feature that's built into the app to print four at a time and then I cut them up with scissors. You'll see that happen later on in the video, but I also have a reel about how I do it. So I'll link to that in the description so that you can see that if you want to, or a short as it may be here on YouTube. That's what they're called here, isn't it? A short. And I'm using the Core Pile rating system, which is a system that was devised by somebody here on YouTube called G from the Book Roast. Basically, you give the book scores out of 10 across seven different categories and then divide the score that it gets out of 70 by seven to get a number that corresponds to the star rating that you give the book. And I got sick of writing out the initial for each of those categories too, so I also made myself some core pile rating stickers. That's what you can see on the left side of this page here. I made those just with my home printer and Canva and they fit a bunch of them on a single A4 page, so I will link that in the description too in case you also want to make some stickers for yourself so that you don't have to write that out all the time if you're also using the Core Power rating system. They're a big time saver. It's funny, I was somehow trying to match all of the colors that I was using on this page to the colors in the book cover, and it sort of didn't work, but that's okay. Sometimes people ask me what I write in my reading journal, what it is that I actually write down about these books. At the moment, I'm writing a quote that stuck with me, which is much easier to keep track of on ebook than some other platforms maybe because you can just highlight it on the Kindle. But if you're wanting to start a reading journal but you're not sure what to write about books, I really recommend you just Google book club questions. Sometimes you can find them specific to the book that you're wanting to write about and sometimes they'll just be general open-ended questions that could apply to any book and it will just give you a starting point thinking about the things that you liked, the things that you didn't like, what you identified with, that kind of thing about a book which gives you a place to start working from. It's kind of like journaling prompts but for your reading journal. Also, having said that, you absolutely don't have to do review spreads in a reading journal if you don't want to. You can just keep a log of all of the books that you read and make pretty pages about them without writing a single word if you want to. Whatever reading journaling looks like for you, it is good and valid and you should keep doing it if you're having a good time. My core pile score for The Wake Up Call has worked out to 7.71, which puts it at four and a quarter stars, which is one of the highest rated books for me so far this year. For my last couple of reading journal recap videos like this one, the month had actually ended at the time that I was posting the video, so I had the full month stats available. I won't have that this time, unfortunately. But as it stands as of the 26th of March, this is the top rated book for the month. So there's a good chance this one will go into my book bracket and battle against the other books that I love this year. I'm just covering that heading with some tape because I don't trust it not to bleed onto the facing page. And I'm gonna sketch out where the book cover for that one will go on my March Reads page here because I haven't printed the cover for it yet. I'm waiting until I have four to print in one go. Next book that I'm doing a review spread for is Artificial Condition, which is the second book in the Murderbot Diary series by Martha Wells. I just felt like this Workshop Wishes ink from Ferris Wheel Press, it's actually a calligraphy ink, but I'm just using it with a paintbrush here, is a really good match for the tones on the cover of the book, so I thought that would be fun just to do kind of a panel of it down the side here, because the main character of this book is a robot, maybe partially human, I think, but you know, a robot. I thought this metallic ink could be a really cool way to kind of represent them. I was just doing vertical strokes here because I thought that might kind of make it look like a sheet of metal or something. It didn't really work, but I like the texture anyway, so it's fine. These books are so original. I'm not really much of a sci-fi person, but I do enjoy the Murderbot Diaries, at least so far. I've only read two of them, so what I know of so far, I am enjoying. 
The Murderbot is exactly as it sounds, a robot that was designed to murder people, but has developed uh, some sentience and a consciousness and just really wants to watch TV dramas and not talk to anyone. Which like, look, I can relate. <laughs> In this second book, Murderbot finds itself in a situation where it's helping people once again against its better judgement and also making friends with another robot with like a spaceship that is near it, which is really like heartwarming and wholesome because they're both so reluctant but also, I don't know, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to describe but it's wonderful. <laughs> Again, because robots technology, I thought I would stamp all of my lettering for this one. I tell you what, it took forever, but I really like the effect of it, so I think it was worth it. This book actually had a quote that I really liked, so I'm going to stamp that at the bottom too, which it's a long one, so this also took quite a bit of time, but the quote is, fear was an artificial condition. It's imposed from the outside, so it's possible to fight it. You should do the things you're afraid of. And you know, I really resonated with a quote from a book I read if I go to the trouble to note it down while I'm listening to an audiobook, because it really interrupts the flow of a book if you stop listening to write something down, and I did that. I also made some mistakes here and dropped a stamp and kind of smudged things a bit, but I think it adds to the overall kind of, it almost reminds me of Firefly a little bit, you know, where it's like, this is sci-fi, but it's also a little bit grungy, and I like that. Lots of four-star reads for me in March, and I did not expect this to be one of them, but here we are. It's got 7.14 on the core pile scale, and I have a page earlier in my journal that lists out all of the core pile ratings versus the scores so that I can refer to it because I do not remember it off the top of my head. This one's four stars, so I will scribble them in on the review spread here, and also flip back to the reading forecast where I had this one and colour that one in too so that I know what the rating was relative to all of the other books that I read this month. This next page is for six, six Scorched Roses, that's actually really hard to say, by Carissa Broadbent. It's a novella in the Crowns of Nyaxia series, so the first one was The Serpent and the Wings of Night, and then this one is a much shorter read, and it is kind of like book one and a half, if you will. I believe it's setting up the backstory for two characters that we're going to meet in book two, so it was interesting to learn about Lilith and Vale. This is a fantasy series with a world of different breeds of vampire who are all kind of at war with each other, and the poor humans who are kind of just a food source. It's quite dark sometimes. Lilith is a really interesting main character. She's human, she's neurodivergent, she's an academic, and she's trying desperately to find the cure to this horrible plague that the gods have put upon the humans because she wants to save everyone, but mostly she wants to save her sister. So she tracks down this vampire who lives nearby as a recluse, his name is Vale, and she convinces him to give her some of his blood so that she can experiment on it and see if it's an important ingredient in her remedies for this plague. And we all know what happens when ancient vampire men and beautiful young human women start to spend time together, don't we? I'm actually using very similar stationery here for this page as what I used for my The Serpent and the Wings of Night page. Partly because that helps it all feel cohesive, like obviously these are books in the same series, partly because I didn't have any other ideas, and partly because I got rid of a lot of stationery recently, and I feel like I'm kind of running on the dregs. I actually think I might need to do some restocking soon. The roses part here is a tie-in to something that happens in the books, I don't want to go into that in too much detail, but something that was really interesting about Vale as a character, he's kind of a hoarder, he lives in this huge mansion and it is packed full of stuff that he has collected over the years, and it's not like sorted or anything, so I thought it would be cool to represent that little bit of him, as well as the roses that somewhat represent Lilith.
this one's core pile scale, well, its, it's final score is ending up very close to the same as Artificial Condition. This one came out at a flat seven, which means that it is also four stars. I also don't have the cover for this one on my page where I curate all of the books that I read in March. So I'm gonna draw out another space for that in pencil and add that book cover once I have enough saved up that I need to print in one go. for a little change of scenery because the next couple of spreads I actually set up at Sticker Hangs, which is a wonderful stationery social night that happens once a month in Brisbane at my very favourite stationery store in the entire world, Stash World. We all bring our journals and just hang out and journal together in the same space and it's so much fun. And Jesse, who owns Stash World, actually has this amazing cache of stickers and washi tapes and things that are communal that anyone can use. And I hadn't really brought very much stationery to this particular Sticker Hangs because I was working on something completely different for me. Still crafty, but I was actually making a floral garland headband for a Morris Dancing side kit that I am part of. So I'd brought all these faux flowers and floristry wire and floristry tape, and I thought that would take me a lot longer than it did. But I finished my garland and I had brought my reading journal and I went, well, we could do some stuff here. So I just used communal stash world pens and communal stash world papers and stickers and things for all of these. Thankfully, I'd already pre-printed the book covers for these ones, so that was something I just had on hand, but the page we're doing at the moment is for Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I read this one as a buddy read with my friend Rachel, and it's a lot of fun. It's very different for Ali Hazelwood, but at the same time, it is still absolutely so obviously an Ali Hazelwood book. I feel like she's known for her women in STEM romance novels and this is funnily enough despite being supernatural themed because the main character is a vampire and the male love interest is a werewolf the female main character her name is misery is a white hat hacker so she like protects security systems online by attempting to hack into them and find their weaknesses it's so interesting because this story gets quite dark and a little bit violent at times, but it's also written in that really witty Ali Hazelwood kind of style where you don't feel like it's the end of the world. D does that make sense? Also, the spiciness of this book has been greatly overstated, as always seems to be the case with Ali Hazelwood books. I don't know what's going on there. If you're on BookTok, have you seen the account that does those rating the spiciness of books by how close the plushy chili is to the camera TikToks? Because they had the chili like all the way up in front of the camera and it did not deserve to be there because this book was not that spicy. It did have a werewolf spicy scene trope in it that you would know if you've read any fan fiction. It was actually new to me, but my friend Rachel educated me, so that was a time. But I think because it's not something that we commonly see in published fiction, maybe that's why people have been thinking it's really spicy, because they're like, I haven't come across this concept before. Anyway, stationary talk time. I copied the heading from the book cover so that I was trying to match the font, although my bride is lined up, whereas the one on the cover is a little bit bouncier. I found some red crepe paper in Jessie's wonderful stash of things. And it's funny because I actually donated this black bit of envelope paper that I'm using here. This is from one of the sticky advent calendars, the pop advent calendar envelopes. And I found it in the stash of things and I went, well, that's perfect, isn't it? I'm stealing this back. Black and red is not usually my vibe, but I feel like this page came together really well and I'm very happy with it. And I really enjoyed the book. This one is gonna end up with not quite a four star rating. I gave it three and three quarter. So yeah, close enough, you know? But I'm not going to do the core pile rating or the actual review part because we hang out and chat at Sticker Hangs. So that's why I'm kind of stopping and starting here a lot. We're all having some fun conversations and chatting about things as we're doing this. So I'd rather hang out and chat with everybody than be like, don't talk to me for 10 minutes while I write this review page here. So I saved that part for when I got home, which means we're moving straight on to Cherish by Tracy Wolf, which is the final book in the Crave series, which means I can get it off my series tracker because I've finished them all now. My journey with the Crave series has been kind of interesting. I started them during the pandemic, I think, and I really enjoyed the first few books, but I also hadn't read any fantasy in quite a while, not any new fantasy anyway, and it really gripped me and I was just absorbed in the world. And then as I went through and I read some other series in between, I kind of got to a point where I was like, oh, I don't know about this one. This is not, it's not bad by any means, but I wouldn't rate it as my favorites. And I gave the first couple of books five stars and I definitely didn't do that for the later ones. I think these ones fall into more of a YA category and possibly that's why I'm not connecting with them so much because I am 36 years old and that's totally fine. If they aren't aimed at me, I don't expect to be giving them five stars necessarily every time. 
Something I do really like about this series though is that there's quite a bit of representation in the characters. They all kind of come from all walks of life, besides them all being like vampires and dragon shifters and gargoyles and stuff like that. Like they all do genuinely have different racial backgrounds and uh, different sexual identities and things like that. So that's very cool to see. And it's presented in a way where it's just like, that's what this person is. And then we move on and we don't kind of fixate on it or anything. So I, I like that normalization and that way of treating the characters. I think that's very cool. But they're kind of exhausting to read because there's just a lot of stuff going on all of the time and it's a lot to keep track of. Also, as someone who's read a lot of fantasy lately, I really admire Tracy Wolf for being willing to kill off her characters because there are some other books I've read, <clears throat> Akata, where characters should have stayed dead that didn't and uh, that's my controversial opinion. So as much as it hurts, sometimes you have to kill a character. But anyway, this felt like a bit of an underwhelming end to the series, but at the same time, things were wrapped up, I don't have any questions, so I guess it's good. We can cross it off the series track and look at that. It's all filled in, that's so nice. I don't have to kind of migrate that to my next reading journal, which is going to be a very good feeling. And look, we're home again, and it's time to add reviews to these pages. If you see my phone on screen a lot while I'm making these videos, it's because I'm referring back to my Goodreads starter. Sometimes it's to get the quotes that I highlighted from the book, and sometimes it's just to refer back to check character names because I tend to forget if I haven't been talking to someone about the book as I've been reading it, which is most of the books that I read, I, I just read them, then I will genuinely forget character names very quickly. So part of why I keep the reading journal, to be honest, is to help me remember the things that I won't remember otherwise. The Corpile rating for Bride is coming in at 6.86, which makes it, what did I, I think I told you this already, didn't I? Three and three quarter stars. And Cherish on the facing page will be 5.86, which a little bit lower, which is gonna make it three and a half stars. since we updated the progress calendar. I'm updating it now for the point of the month I was at when I was filming this, which was the 24th. Empire of Storms is going all the way through. I deliberately put it at the bottom so that I could just keep drawing that line through because I actually took a break partway through reading this. That book is long and exhausting. And most of the other books on my maybe next reading forecast page were library books. And so there was a time limit on how long I had those available to me. So I had to put Empire of Storms on the back burner for a little while and just focus on the library books and make sure I got them finished in time. It's so funny, I started doing these monthly reading journal tracking pages only in August last year and in an A5 journal, which has a lot less space than this one that I'm using right now, which is B5, which is giant. And I added one of these calendar pages to, I think it was September, and I didn't love using it. I liked how it looked at the end of the month, but I didn't really think much of it. And now it's like a must have really fun, enjoyable page for me. So isn't it funny how that changes? I'm just writing out the books I have on hold through the library at the moment so that when I get to my April pages, I know what I'm putting on my maybe next reading forecast page. And I'd also started reading Flawless by Elsie Silver at this point, again on my friend Rachel's recommendation. I think I'm gonna have a Rachel recommendation in every month going forward. So I had to add that to my March Reads page as well.
This is also something I do a lot for my reading journal. I just make a list on a post-it of all of the book covers that I need to print. And once it gets up to having four titles on there, or sometimes I need to print two of the same one because it goes on this page as well as on its own review spread page, that's when I break out the HP Sprocket and print some book covers. So let's move on to the next review. This one's going to be for The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which is the second book in the Inheritance Game series. This one's actually another YA. And I enjoyed this one a lot more than the first book, funnily enough. I'd seen them all over TikTok and Instagram and I was like, yeah, look, I'll give them a go. It was available immediately through my library and I didn't have to wait for the first book. And it was the same with this one, actually. I didn't have to wait for the Hawthorne Legacy to become available either, which is very helpful. It's a bit of a Cinderella story, but with a dark academia twist where the main character, Avery, who is kind of an orphan, very suddenly inherits the wealth of this man called Tobias Hawthorne, who has left her his entire estate. And she has no idea who he is, but he has these four grandsons who are very into puzzles and games, just like their grandfather was, and are like, what's going on? Who are you? We're not letting you get away with this. That was book one anyway. This is book two, and the mysteries and the twists and the turns keep coming. I think this would make an incredible film series, and I hope that it happens. I haven't looked into whether or not it's been optioned, but still. I think it would be great. I busted out a page from a beautiful William Morris writing set that I have that was a gift from my friend Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline. I love it so much. And I had some ivy washi tape and I've also paired it up with a bunch of stickers. The sticker sheet is from Sticky as well. I love the sticky things for my reading journal. This one I think is called Herb Studies. And I used a couple of stickers from it on my previous spread for the Inheritance Games as well. So it felt good to kind of have it back here again too. Yay consistency. This book ended up again with a four star rating. So many four star ratings for me this month. And the Corpile rating was 7.57 in case you're curious. I will definitely be continuing this series because it is a lot of fun. In case you aren't familiar with The Page Majors, which is my very own book club that I run with my channel members who have joined the channel here on YouTube at the Page Majors level, that's a thing that I have. It's very fun. Our March book is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez, which was chosen by the Page Mage Jessica. It was set in Egypt and I do not have any Egypt styled stationery and I didn't want to buy any because that would take too long to reach me or anything like that. And we are also running a no buy in the Discord so that we were all saving money throughout the month of March. So I jumped on Canva and I found some Egypt styled stickers. I also grabbed a little bit of fan art for this book that I found online and I made some stickers with my Cricut, which seems to be a thing that I'm into lately. And I had this brainwave while I was doing this that it would be fun to kind of age the What the River Knows title. I tried it on the hieroglyphs above and then I didn't end up using those, but this is that same Workshop Wishes calligraphy ink and I'm just using it on this little sponge tip thing that I've had for ages and had no idea what to do with, so it's coming in handy now finally. At the time I'm recording this, we haven't had our page majors chat about this book yet, but I know from our brief chats about it so far in the Discord thread for it that it has been... Uh, one that has had some very mixed feelings. Some people have been like, this is infuriating and I can't stand the main character. I personally really enjoyed it, so very different experiences going on. The main character's name is Inez and she is a teenage girl living in Buenos Aires. And she finds out from her uncle that her parents have gone missing in Egypt and are presumed to be dead. It's the late 1800s and people are obsessed with Egypt and they're all armchair archaeologists and pillaging things from tombs and there's something about the way nobody will talk to her about what happened to her parents that just doesn't sit right with Inez so she goes to Egypt to try and get to the bottom of things herself and to find out what happened to her parents in their final moments. But the more she finds out, the more questions it raises, and it sends her on this crazy adventure. When we have our chats with the page majors, I like to put together some book club prompts so that we can all think about some answers to the same questions, so we can be talking about the same thing at the same time. And so I like to put those on their own page and then just have my general review for the book on the other page. So I'm writing out the questions here on the right side. You know what's really funny about this one? At the time I set this up, I was thinking like, oh, the pink floral theme probably isn't going to go so well with this book that's set in in Egypt in like 1880 or whatever and it turned out that at least the roses not so much the rest of the stuff although florals generally I think are fine if roses are part of the context but there was roses were a kind of a big theme of something that happened in the book so I was kind of stoked that it all came together like that I did not expect that at all
look at that, another four star read for March. This is kind of funny because a lot of my books have not been reaching four stars since I adopted the Corpile rating system. It's much harder for a book to hit five stars in that system, which I think is good. I know some people like to be really generous with their five star ratings. I don't enjoy that so much, but it's if, if you'd like to, then like that's great. You should keep doing it. Just flipping back now to my overall book tracker for the whole year and adding on all of these books that we've just done spreads for. If you're interested in seeing some more book tracking ideas for kind of full year setups like this, I just last week put up a video where I showed five different ways that you can track your reading. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the top right corner as well as down in the description down below. Also updating my goal tracker here, Storygraph says that I am four books ahead of schedule, so that's very nice. And I can color in the second box on my series tracker for the Inheritance games as well. If you are a Page Mage level channel member and part of the Page Mages book club in the Discord, then you might already know this, but our book for the month of April is Sourdough by Robin Sloan. Big thanks to Deb for picking this one out for us. I'm really excited to read it. It sounds fun. It's like baking, but also magic. If you would like to read it along with us and you're not yet a Page Mages channel member, you can hit the link in the description or you can follow the QR code that's up on the screen at the moment too if you're watching on a TV and that will take you to the right place to become a Page Mage so you can join our little book club. It's so much fun. Less fun is when you underestimate how much space you're going to need for your book cover and you have added text to the page already and it gets covered. So I'm just going to steal some sticker paper off the offcuts from earlier and cover that up with some sticker paper and write this down again so that it fits in the space. Whoops. Also, I realized flipping back through that I hadn't added the dates that I read the What the River Knows book to that spread. So I'm just adding those on as well. And I thought I would put this cute little piece of art. I got this one from Artsy Daisy on Instagram. It's very, very cute. Little picture of Inez and Wit, the very mysterious Wit who I absolutely love. What a great character. I finally have these book covers so I can add them to my March Reads page, which is gonna be very satisfying. It's gonna look a lot better than my pencil marks here. So let's stick those down. I also now have a spare book cover for Flawless that I can add to its review page once I get to that. I could put it in the back pocket at the back of the journal, but I tend to lose them when I do that. So I just use a washi sticker and stick things down to the page instead. And that way I don't lose my book covers. Let's move on now to the pages that I'm going to use to track all of my reading in April. And it is coming into autumn here in Australia. It's finally starting to be comfortable in my city. It's been so nice and cool. It's been raining nonstop. So I thought it would be fun to use some autumn themed stationery. These are all from Paper Monogatari, which is Anna from Journal Away's store. This is all her beautiful work and I love them so much. And I've been holding on to these since she sent them to me back in the Northern Hemisphere's autumn last year, which was like September kind of time. Everything I'm using here was either from her tiny bookshop or her autumn serenity collections. I've just had a look on her website and it seems like most of this stuff is still available but I'm not certain you can still get it in a bundle. I think you might have to buy everything individually so just so you know. And when you have an art print like this gorgeous bookshop art print that I'm using on the left page here, why bother doing anything else for a cover page? It is already perfect in itself. I love doing a cover page. I know they're superfluous. They don't really serve a purpose other than getting you in the headspace and being really fun to do and honestly that's reason enough for me so I will continue doing cover pages because I love them. I'm also trying to make sure that the cover page kind of blends onto the right page as well, which is where I'm going to have my reading stats for the month. Just making sure that the washi tapes kind of go from the left page all the way over onto the right so that it looks like they are joining those two pages together, I guess. Also, if you like what you see here, but you are in the Northern Hemisphere and autumn things are kind of irrelevant to you right now, I did want to mention that Anna's just released her spring collection as well, and they are spectacular. So go and have a look at those. I have them on the way to me at the moment too. So whether I can wait for spring to use them or I might just use them soon because they're beautiful, we will have to see, but they haven't reached me yet. So calm me farm, Erin, slow down. I also have this sheet of illuminated letters that came from Sticky's advent calendar. I think this was with the vintage set and I think they're so beautiful. Funnily enough, when they released the advent calendars, they said you can't get these stickers anywhere else. But I have discovered that this sticker sheet is available on their website, so that's good to know. I might actually get a second one for myself because I think it's gorgeous. And it only comes with one of each letter, so it's a little bit tricky to use. If you did want to grab one, I would recommend maybe grabbing two, just so that you don't run out of the important letters. 
I'm pairing it up with my wooden letter stamps here and I'm using just the capitals to sit next to it so that it feels like a nice bold kind of heading statement. And I actually added the April heading onto a piece of the vellum paper that Anna sent her beautiful goods wrapped in. So I think that looks nice. This will probably look a little bit weird, but the top left corner of the April header wouldn't stay down. So I put a little bit of a glue pen glue behind it and then I just sat my scissors on top of it to keep it weighed down so it would stick. I'm using some Archer and Olive Calligraph pens to do the headings for each of my book stats that I want to track for the month. These are the same as every month. I just feel like this is an easy way to do it and I like how the page looks once it's all done. It's funny, when I got these, I didn't think I would be using them very much and I have actually used them quite a lot. And I really like that they have a fine tip on one end of the brush and a thicker tip on the other end. I find that the fine tip is really good for small lettering like this, kind of similar to the Pentel brush sign pens or something like the Pilot Fudo Misake. If you're wondering how I use this page, we will fill out my reading stats for where we're up to so far for March a little bit later on. It won't be the full complete stats for the whole month, but I thought it would be fun to fill them out together anyway. And then maybe I'll fill out the proper ones later. Anyway, we'll get to that. Let's move on to my list of books that I might read in the month of April and a place to place other book covers for anything else that I read that I didn't expect to read and also the progress tracker for the month of April as well. I'm using basically the same setup as last time but I'm adding something a little bit different to make this calendar work a bit better. The two lines that I'm putting close together are going to be the space where I put the number for each day so that I have the whole space underneath that for tracking books that I read. It's not often that I read more than two to three books at once, but I did hit a point where I was reading three books at once last month, well, this month in March. And so having to put the name of the book over the top of the row where the number for that day was, was just a bit uncomfortable. I did it for What the River Knows and I didn't wanna to have to do that again. So I'm setting up my calendar in a way that means that I won't have to do that again for this month. I thought I'd give you the dot grid dimensions for this calendar, but just keep in mind that I'm using a B5 journal here. So if you're in an A5 journal, you might need to adapt this to fit over two pages or just make it a little bit smaller to fit on a single page in your journal. I've left four dot grid spaces blank at the top of the page and two dot grid spaces on either side of the calendar. Each of the calendar boxes is four spaces wide by four spaces tall with an extra one for that brown row, which is where I'm putting these stickers now for each number. I can see the number on these much clearer in real life, by the way, than they are showing up on screen. So don't worry, they are readable, I promise. That means the whole calendar is 28 dot grid spaces wide and 20 dot grid spaces tall on the right side, but because Monday and Tuesday are at the end of the month, they're on their own row. That means on the left side, the calendar is actually 25 spaces tall. The left page is going to be my maybe next list or my reading forecast or my TBR, whatever you prefer to call it. I'm going back to maybe next this time because of my illuminated letter stickers. I just think it's gonna work out with the letters that I have left. And again, I'm decorating both of these pages at the same time because I want them to feel like they go together, like they're very cohesive and like they're joined across the middle, you know, not just two pages next to each other, but two pages connected to each other. I want to layer these headings over the top of some of the washi tapes and stickers so I wanted it to really stand out from the page in that case so I'm going to put them on the leftover bits of sticker paper at the bottom of my sticker sheet from my What the River Knows page earlier. We've got maybe next progress tracker and books completed for this one and I am burning through these illuminated letter stickers. I'm going to have to get creative for my book club page to make sure that I can still make it say what I want to say.
have the book covers for the books that are going on my maybe next section for next month. I wanted to have them as a reference so that I could work out the spacing for these. I think I've got it pretty well sussed. If I leave two spaces on the left side and then add a book cover and then leave three spaces in between them, then it seems to work out quite balanced across the page. I have all of these books on reserve through the library already, so they are on my maybe next for that reason, basically. We've got The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brienne Randall, which has been on my to be read list or maybe next list or books that I feel like could be good list for ages. We've got Powerless by Lauren Roberts as well, which my friend Holly read recently. We have similar taste, thought I'd give it a go. Checkmate by Ali Hazelwood, which is her YA offering that my friend Rachel read and thought it was great, so I thought I would give that a go too. And then also Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which honestly I don't know anything about, but I think the cover art is stunning, so that's the main reason I want to read that one. One thing to note about these stickers is that most of them are pretty transparent and I didn't totally realize that. I peeled up a beautiful one that's a stack of books here and put it down and then I didn't like how you could see the text underneath through it and then when I tried to peel it back up it took some of the paper underneath off with it which isn't great so I thought I would I'd sadly have to sacrifice that sticker but I popped this nice back of the head girly over the top and I really like how she looks there so that's nice. I love her skirt. She's a little bit thicker, so she's not transparent like the other one, but when I'm using those transparent stickers in the future, and sometimes I like that look, like that flower there looks pretty good, but in the future when I do that, I'm gonna put it on some sticker paper and then cut around that, so it's kind of like sticker inception, you know, but it will be more solid on the page then. And now we can move on to the next spread, which is for the Page Majors Book Club. And I'm just going to set this one up with a lot of space because I don't know how much I'm going to need at this point. I guess I have a fair idea, but leaving space for book club questions on one side and my review on the other. And I haven't added the heading onto the page yet. I want to get a feel for the book before I start decorating it in a way that matches the book, because obviously I haven't read it yet. So <laughs> one thing at a time. Also, I forgot to put this book's completed heading on the previous spread. So just quickly chucking that down here while I remember. And then we can get back to the page majors page. And I did want to mention with those illuminated letters, I've had to alter the F sticker into a P to make it work. And I'm also using an upside down W for the M. <laughs> you got to get crafty when you've only got one of each. Almost finished with my April monthly reading tracking spreads, but just flipping back to the cover here, I thought the bottom of the page needed a little bit more visual weight to balance out the darkness of the shelf in the top right corner of the reading stats page. So I'm just adding a bit more of that tape underneath here to make this feel a bit more balanced. And then the April pages are done. I've actually finished one more book, so we can flip back into the March pages here and we're just going to do one more review page. Wasn't flawless though, so I'm going to move the flawless cover to the next page and we're going to do Empire of Storms because I finally finished the long book. I know a lot of people like to tandem read this one with the next book, Tower of Dawn. I believe it takes place at the same time but follows other characters. I do not have the mental capacity for that, especially because I'm consuming these books on audiobook and it is much harder to switch between them. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, maybe sometime in the future, but 
not for me. Sorry, pals. I am enjoying the Throne of Glass series, but I'm also finding it really draining. And for me, I know some people think they are Sarah J Mass's best property. They are not that for me. I haven't read the Crescent City books yet, but I do like Akatar a lot more than these ones. Just my opinion. I did actually have Tower of Dawn in my list of book covers that I really thought that I might get through, you know, finish both of them because I did start Empire of Storms in February. So it's taken me a full month to read. Adding Tower of Dawn in there too was probably a little bit too ambitious. So that book cover is in there, but I didn't read it. Just know that. I think I'm probably going to take a break. I do already have Tower of Dawn downloaded and in my Audible and ready to go, but I think it might be a month or two before I'm ready to tackle that one. So I don't want to talk too much about the book because this is book five in a series, Empire of Storms, the one that we're doing this page for at the moment. You can't really talk about this book without having spoilers for the previous books, so I'm just not going to go into it. But I thought I might just mention some character names and what I think of them. So absolute favorite, Abraxas. Love him. He's great. Love Manon, love Elide, hate Lorcan, love Lysandra, kind of lukewarm on Adian. That's all I'll say. Let's leave it there. Just in case you're curious, my core pile rating for this one came in at 6.57, which gives me three and a half stars for this one. I just, I wasn't thinking about it when I wasn't reading it, and that is a sign, so there you go. While we're on this page, I haven't added the book cover to it because I haven't printed it yet, but we'll flip back over to the March Reads page and I'll update the core pile score and the rating there as well. Since March isn't actually over, I can't definitively say what my number one read for the year will be. Not reading Tower of Dawn, just making that clear. Um, but currently, The Wake Up Call has the top score, so I think possibly it will be the one that goes onto my book bracket. Obviously, I won't be updating that in this video because I cannot time travel. But let me know in the comments if you want to see it, what you think the best format is. I can do that as a short if you like, or I can just incorporate it into next month's video if you prefer. So let me know how you would like to see it most. Now, something I wanted to mention, I've got The Name of the Wind here and I have just started reading it quite close to the end of the month. It's the Literary Ladies Book Club book. It was kind of the first thing we did way back at the start of this video. I was whinging about the length of Empire of Storms. This book is longer. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I was recording this on the 26th, so I was updating my progress tracker here again, and I accidentally wrote Empire of Storms on the line that was supposed to be flawless, so stick a paper to the rescue again. And this little line is for The Name of the Wind, but I've only just started reading it. It's a long title, it won't fit in that space, so just know that's what that's supposed to be. Let's give Empire of Storms its book cover so this page can be complete. And I printed a little sourdough cover as well so I can put it on the books completed section for next month. Obviously, I haven't completed it yet, but it's a book club book and I will complete it. So that's where it's going to go. So we're all set up for April and we've done all that we can for March before I go away to Sydney for a little holiday this weekend. So let's have a flip through of everything that we've done so far for March and into April. I'll probably use this blank space under the calendar for a standout book cover. And we will do a little roundup of my March reading stats so far in just a moment. So if you're curious about that, don't go away. Likelihood that I'll finish The Name of the Wind this month is low, but there's a space for it, so it will go there regardless of when I finish it. But besides that, I'm very happy with how many of my maybe next books got completed this month. I loved most of the books that I read, so that is always a very good sign. And there's space there for two more books, maybe, or if I only finish Flawless, then it can just have a double page spread and that will be just fine too. I'm loving the coziness of my April pages. I can't wait to live in these ones. I feel like I'll spend a lot of time here. And if you wanna spend that time with me too, then make sure that you're subscribed so you can see next month's video as well. Now let's go back to the beginning of March. I'm gonna grab a second one of the sheet of paper that I used for my reading stats here. And we're just gonna write it all out again, but as a kind of up until now, like for now, these are the reading stats for now, for March. 
Also, let me know if you want to see me update this with the real ones in next month's video or as a short or something. But as of the 26th, I have completed eight books in the month of March. That's a total of 3,240 pages. And my average rating for those books was 3.88, which makes sense because that's nearly four and I did feel like there were lots of four star books. So I'm just gonna color in my little star rating stamp here to match that as closely as I can. The format was a completely even split for me this time, which is unusual. It was 50% audio to 50% digital. And for genres, no big surprises here. We've got five romance, five fantasy, although I wrote four at first and had to try and make it look like a five, three YA, one sci-fi, one mystery, and one historical. I'm just going to let this page float here as the interim reading stats page, but I will probably just stick it in the back of the book or something so that I have this little record. But that is it for this month. I hope you had fun reading through March with me. If you'd like to keep watching, there's a link on the screen to my five different reading tracker ideas for you. And underneath that is a link to another video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Catch you next week. Bye.